This is pure. I'm doing an all around tier list, okay? So, like, comp, ranked, pubs, everything, alright? So, Wraith, Octane, uh, Gibby, Mirage, Caustic, Rampart, Bangalore, Crypto, Bloodhound, Pathfinder, Revenant, Watson, Loba, Lifeline, Horizon, Fuse. This last simple. This is for overall. So pubs ranked comp. If I'm doing exclusively comp, exclusively comp, we'll do this. So the reasoning behind my tier list for this, for competitive, right? Is this is your standard comp. This is the most standard. This is NA's standard, Wraith, Gibby, Blood, right? A tier, I got Path, Crypto, Octane because Octane is like a, a niche swap for Wraith. You can take you can take advantage of Octane if you're an early rotator and you like to run Bloodhound. If you're stuck on running the Bloodhound crutch, sure, run Octane over Wraith, um, which is what TSM does. Uh, crypto, really good uh, alternative to Bloodhound. If you land somewhere that doesn't have an easily accessible beacon, like Countdown, Train Yard, Harvester, um, even Sorting Factory, because Sorting Factory usually gets split. Pathfinder, he's one of those characters that if you're not stuck on the Bloodhound crutch, like, in my opinion, TSM should be running Pathfinder. There's, there's no way they shouldn't be running it. They have the best drop in the game. They should run Wraith, Blood, or Wraith Pathfinder, Gibby, because Path just lets you rotate early and you get beacons. You don't need two characters to make that happen. Um, it's, it's a waste of a character. It's a waste of a character slot running Octane with Bloodhound, in my opinion if you have mid map and then b tier these are your your flex characters you're like your flex aggressive characters so they're like kind of niche they kind of define your play style uh and how you play in comp so horizon revenant bangalore caustic right caustic you're going to be really defensive you're going to be playing for zones you have the the capabilities to be offensive but after the nerf you're primarily defense right um bangalore teams that rotate in really really late um and aren't going to be running into people on their like during their rotation Bangalore is really, really good for that because you're able to play in these really, really dangerous spots in endgame and do these crazy rotations because you have two, um, two airstrikes, you have smokes, you have all that shit, right? Revenant, super, super niche, extremely niche. Um, but some teams get good use out of him, right? He's going to be super aggressive. Uh, I think Revenant gets like the best use out of teams that can rotate early and then like kind of cause chaos in the in the final zone area, you know, like baiting fights and stuff like that. Um, I think Rev's pretty good. I don't think you want to play Rev if you're on edge, honestly. Maybe maybe some teams can get away with it, but if I was playing Revenant, I would not play him from the edge. Um, Horizon is another really really good. Horizon's another really really good edge character because she gives you super super aggressive uh, fighting potential. Any team that's in a building, um, if it's the right building and you know like how to black hole someone through a wall to completely destroy the fight, then like Horizon's God tier for pushing. Um, Watson, hear me out on this Watson placement. Hear me out on this. This this tier list is comp only. I already did the normal one. Hear me out on Watson. Watson, in my opinion, is extremely undervalued. Okay, so in the current meta, right, especially after the Gibby changes, where you have bleed through on shields, uh, on, on Gibby's arm shield, you can't just trade for free anymore. Like, you can't just give your, your Gibby a charge rifle or a sniper or a scout or something, right, and just let him trade for free and farm evos, right? Um, so Watson actually does low-key have a little bit of a use now if you were to combo Wraith, Gibby, Watson. It's super niche, extremely, actually not even Wraith, Gibby, Watson. I think Tech's old comp with Wraith Crypto Watson can work if you're a team that rotates super, super early. Like extremely early. Because then you just run around with like, you run around with scouts or like really, really good mid-range weapons and you just bot people. Chat, all of you bots saying Horizon is S tier, this is for competitive. This is not, I put Horizon S tier for ranked in pubs. You, you, got, your, you got your spotlight. This is competitive. This is not, this is not ranked or pubs, okay? Um... But yeah, Watson has her niche. Watson has her niche for sure. For competitive, I put all niche characters, extremely niche characters into B tier. A tier is flex, S tier is standard. The standard team runs this in S tier. 
A tier, these are alternative picks. These are some teams you're going to see them running it. It's not standard, but some teams can take advantage of it. Niche means that these characters are catered to a specific playstyle to, to certain teams. For, for example, the specific playstyle that my team has, we are the only team that runs Bangalore. She's extremely niche, but it's dependent on where you land and how you play that makes them, them niche. Horizon is B tier. Like it's not gonna, it's not, you're not gonna argue with me. I played Horizon in competitive. I've played Bang in competitive. They fill the same fucking role. They're not the same role. They, they, they feel like the same slot on a team. It's, it's not up for debate. I've played both comps that use both these characters in comp. They do the same shit. All four of these characters, actually. They do the same shit. Not the same shit, but you know what I mean. They feel the same the same kind of, uh, the same slot on a team. What do you think the odds are that they are even fixing anything that might be broken? Oh, they're not even awake right now. I can almost guarantee the devs have no idea anything's going on right now. The thing with Path being A tier, the thing with Path being A tier and Octane being A tier, right? I said it earlier, I'll, I'll reiterate it a little bit. With this being the standard comp that most teams run, right? You have two options to flex out here. Gibby is your lock-in. Gibby will always be your lock. Well, nine out of 10 times, Gibby will be your lock, right? Unless you're like a, unless you're like a blood on caustic team, but I think there's only one or two of those, right? I'm gonna move all these down. Just like ignore this. This isn't anything to do with the tier list. This is just gonna show you an example, right? Of team comps. So in comp, uh, there's a couple, there's a couple um, different variations of team comps that you can do, right? So if you're a team like TSM, in my opinion, um, because they still rotate, they still rotate really early, right? They leave by two minutes and shit. Their team comp that they run is this, right? But this comp, in my opinion, is super, super fucking inefficient because they have one character for, for fast rotating, right? They have one character for beacon, right? What's one character that does both of those? What is one character that fills both of those slots? that makes it so you don't need two of them. It's Pathfinder. Right? Octane lets you leave your, your POI really early, but Pathfinder lets you leave even earlier. And he doesn't have low profile anymore, right? So, in my opinion, this is the comp that TSM should be running right now. Gibby Wraith Path. This would be like the freest fucking comp for them. Rotating on zip though is compared to rotating on pad through the sky. Well, yeah, the zip isn't meant for rotating. It's for leaving your POI early and getting the spots quickly. But this is the comp that I, I would run, honestly. If I had East Fragment, this I'd run this every game. Is Wraith necessary? In high level lobbies, I, I think she's pretty necessary for most teams. The only reason the TSM gets away with running Octane is because they land mid map so they can rotate really fast. That's the only reason this works but I think that this is just inefficient. I think you can do more if you swapped out Bloodhound and Octane for Wraith and Path. I think Bloodhound's like a massive crutch character, honestly. Like it's a super crutch character. Um, but like then you have edge comps, right? Like teams that play extreme edge like us. Um, so like an S tier edge comp IMO, you need Wraith. If you play hard edge, what do you mean by crutch character? I mean that the character does things for you that like, okay, so Bloodhound, when I say Bloodhound is a crutch character, I don't mean he's a crutch character in the same way that I call Horizon or Caustic a crutch, right? Bloodhound makes it so that you don't need game sense. You just press a button and you know where everyone is that's around you, right? Like that's what I mean by as a crutch. Like you don't need game sense to play Bloodhound. You just press Q and then you have all the info you need. Whereas Horizon's a crutch in the sense that you just throw your ult and teams die. And Caustic's a crutch in the sense that teams are in your gas and they just die. Um, yeah, that, that's pretty much what I mean by crutch. But if you're an edge team, I think the best comp, dependent on where you go. So for us, for Skyhook, for Skyhook, I genuinely believe this is the best comp. Genuinely believe this is the best comp for Skyhook and Trials because of how long it takes us to loot and how like when we rotate, right? We don't run into anybody on the edge because most teams loot fast and just leave near us. So we can just literally spend the whole game looting and then just play late game. Um, the only people that we really run into is like SF and Zach Mazer's team. But I think most standard, like the, the most common edge comp, because like 90% of people play edge for some reason, is is this, like, this is a, this is the most well-rounded comp that doesn't really like it doesn't matter where you land you can just run this 
from everywhere. Uh, because you have a crutch for intel, you have a bubble for free. Like, uh, bubble's just god tier, honestly. Bubble and airstrike is god tier. Why doesn't liquid run path? So, uh, the reason that we run path, right, or we don't run path, is because path is for leaving your POI early, right? Now, does anyone in chat know how long it takes to clear trials? Almost two minutes. In pro play, it's about two minutes almost. So that means we're leaving extremely late. Now, what does path give you in competitive? It gives you the ability to leave really, he gives you the ability to leave your POI really fast, which we can't take advantage of. So Did there's no reason for us out? to run path. Also, because we're extremely far edge, right? Let me, sh let me show you. Okay, well, this one's kind of outdated, but like you get the idea, right? This is where we land, right? We take the west side and we take trials, right? So if we tried to leave early, look at all that we have to run through. We either have to run through three teams here on our left, or we have to run through CLG on our right and complexity. And nobody wants to fight complexity. So the possibilities of us rotating early is impossible, completely impossible. Why does no one want to fight complexity? Because they're the best fighting team in the region. They, they know how to disassemble a team just fighting them. They are the best fighting team in the region. We play to avoid complexity at all costs during our rotations. Lose, a, lose not complexity, lose on CLG. Uh, he, he play, he's signed to complexity, but Lou plays for CLG. Complexity is Monsoon, Shiny, and Reptar. You do not want to fight them. You don't want to get close to them. We, what we do is we always avoid complexity and just play snipers against them. We don't bother going near them because they will run us down. Um, but all this shit that we have to rotate through, dude, we can't leave early. We have to fight if we try to rotate early and there's no point. We just deny ourselves loot. So we just spend like four minutes looting the whole entirety of Skyhook and everything. What teams do we avoid? Just complexity. If CLG ever runs into us, we will always fight CLG. I'm not afraid to fight CLG. I'd prefer not to fight them early, but if they try to go through us, we'll fight them. Why bang and not blood? What value do we get out of Bloodhound? Right, say hypothetically, right? I'll give you guys a hypothetical, right? So we land Skyhook, zone pulls into Thermal Station, right? We're rotating extremely late. Every spot is going to be taken. The choke will be taken. These buildings will be taken. If it's pulling to the back left, we're fucked. We can't win the game, so we're playing for kills, right? Most of this shit is going to be taken. So what is actually going to be open? Terrible spots. Like for example, this south gondola right here. We can play under that because we have Bangalore to give us smokes and to give us uh, an airstrike to rotate. We can play extremely terrible positions because we have Bangalore. Also goldfish and Christmas, <laughs> Christmas with the tier ones, appreciate it guys. We can play awful spots. Spots that no other team could get away with playing because we have Bangalore. If all the good teams land in the north, why don't you land in the south? Because the loot in the south is terrible and all the teams that drop south are really hard headed about their POIs. Like we used to drop tree, right? But tree has terrible loot and it's hard edge. So tree is, in my opinion, tree is the worst POI in the fucking game. This, this POI is terrible. Any team that goes here, you're setting yourself up for failure. Don't bother with tree. Launch site, oh, this map doesn't even have a launch site. Um, yeah, this map's outdated, whatever. This shit, launch site as well as uh, thermal are just infinitely better than tree in every single way. Dome it might be a hard contender for one of the worst drops as well. Tree and dome are terrible. Overlook is goaded. Um, Epicenter's really good. Fragment East is really good. Skyhook West is good. Lava Fissure's trash. <laughs> Mirage Voyage. Uh, Harvester's trash. Staging is pretty good. Geyser is terrible. Lava City's okay. Do all teams agree on spots to drop beforehand? No, we fight for our spots. Most of the reason that spots are already predetermined is because a long time ago when scrims were active, um, when scrims were active, people did fight for their spots. And now that scrims aren't active, people kind of already have their spots locked in. Like there's no like fighting for the drop unless you're doing it in a tournament. And most people don't want to do that. But you guys get the idea. Why is Overlook goaded? The loot is trash because uh, because Overlook doesn't get trapped by anybody. So look where Overlook is. Look where all the nearest POIs are, right? You've got about 150 meters to 200 meters between POIs. And you have a balloon right, uh, right here. There's a balloon right here that you can take. What people do at Overlook is they loot really fast 
they hit the balloon and their balloon can get them all the way over here. It can get them into Fragment West where they can run up the hill and hit the other balloon. So they can rotate from east to west in under two minutes and get an early spot. Whereas you look at places like Sky, uh, West Sky and Trials and look at the distance between where we are and where enemies are landing. So we have Lava Fissure, we have Countdown, and we have East Skyhook that we have to worry about within 50 to 100 meters of yeah. us. So for example, the reason I called Tree and Dome some of the worst POIs in the game Look at tree and look at tree, right? You have thermal, you have launch, you have sorting all within 100 meters. You have dome, launch and lava and sorting all within 150 meters. Geyser, geyser's in a good spot. 